for the first episode actually working on our fleet here at Pedalbox, you're going to see us fixing up my Rover SD1. It's not running very well at the minute, it's got a bit of an ignition problem high up, it cuts out around 4,500 RPM, it sounds like it's got two step, which would be brilliant if it wasn't because it was broken, and it's also running horribly, horribly lean. I had it on a dyno a couple of weeks ago, and they actually aborted the run when it got to about 17 to 1 or 16 to 1 air fuel ratio, so that was, um, that was not good. So we're going to see what we can do to fix all of that. So we've come out into the countryside on uh, a little bit of national speed limit road so we can do two tests on the car without interfering with traffic. One, 0 to 60, and two, fuel economy. Yeah, now we're doing these because they're both fairly easy to test. 0 to 60 we can do with timer apps on the phones. It won't be super accurate, but you know, we're not the automotive press. We don't need hundredths of a second. And the fuel economy I can actually get through the car's built-in trip computer. The only problem is that's stuck on metric. So we'll have to convert from litres per 100k out to UK miles per UK gallons. So that'll be a bit of a pain, but we can we can fix that in post. Now the 0 to 60 run's going to be fairly simple. We'll take a couple of runs up to 60, average them out a bit, throw out any obvious uh, anomalies, and that'll just give us a bit of a baseline that we can compare to later, as well as kind of telling me how many horsepower might have run away over the 35 years that this car's been running for. So that'll be one nice number to compare. And we're also going to get the fuel economy on a nice gentle cruise along a known stretch of motorway or something. Then again, a bit, bit, bit of a baseline, something we can compare the before and after once we've richened up the carburetors and done all that ignition work too. And here we go. We've actually got two timers running here. So here we go for the second one. Let's see where we get up to this time. This is the final run. And... 4 to 60 in point 0.1, this is so broken. So, hopefully this is going to show 10 seconds. 4 to 60 in... Off. This one was 0 to 60 in 14.64. So, between them, We've got three reasonably solid runs out of Harry's. Yeah. At four, uh, roughly 14 and a half, 15 and 15 and a half. Yeah. Now we need to go back, change a few things, and on the way home, we'll do the quick fuel economy test as well. So we're just coming back to the house, having done a quick run on uh, some dual carriageway at 60 mile an hour for a little while, and uh, we got 8.6 litres per 100 kilometres out of the car, which isn't bad. Bit of maths, that's 32 ish to the gallon, which is pretty respectable, all things considered. So I've got here a set of new old stock HT leads, a full set of spark plugs, and a distributor cap. I picked all these up off a guy in the SD1 club who's scaling down his parts collection a little bit, and I'm benefiting from that. So let's get cracking. It opens that way. So now we'll just whiz the old plugs out. I've already got the leads off, so we'll just finish off from there. Man, these are like oily and manky. Right, so here's all the plugs. One on the bottom, six on the top. And one of them, cylinder number one, they're not looking so healthy. Really, really blackened. There's tons of like soot deposit up on the, I uh, can't remember which way around, the electrode or the anode. The rest, stained quite badly, not looking very healthy, but certainly better than the number one there. Lots of them quite oily as well, which I don't think is great, but um, maybe one day I'll have to get an endoscope and shove a little camera down there, see what's going on. Or pop the head off. Not that that's a fun job. Well, all the plugs are in now. So we've got this little bundle of fun to deal with, my new HT leads, so I'll get these on. Um, I'm going to leave those ones on for now and just replace them one at a time so I don't forget which uh, port on the distributor is which plug. So just going to go one at a time. Now conveniently, my numbered leads mean I don't have to worry about what's on the other end. Now I just got halfway through replacing all my HT leads and forgot about this. So let's do that again, maybe with less fail this time. So with the old one off now, I'm just going to copy the numbering layout of all my leads that are on this. I'm just going to crown lead off so I've got a bit more room there. Yeah, just going to copy all of those onto the new one. The uh, U-boot just isn't quite big enough to fit over the old coil 
I'll reuse the old one. That should be all good. So we'll match, match those up on the other side. Now there's a trick I've learned from watching a lot of roadkill over the years. David Freiberger uses zip ties to make ignition lead separators. And it's a pretty simple job. The, uh, the hard part usually is combing them all into order in the first place, so I'm going to have to sort of detangle these a little bit. The first step is you just get the whole bundle kind of untangled just in so that all of your wires are in the right one, two, three, four, five, six order, and then you loosely zip tie around the whole thing. You get each ordered pair, so this is one and two here, and you zip tie through the gap between them, like that, and around the big outer loop. And then with each of these that you add, it locates the cable that you've just set in. So they're all on now, so we just tighten them up. Don't go too tight at first, this is just to keep everything arranged properly. And we tighten up the outer loop. There is a trick to making these um, end blocks a bit neater as well, but I can't remember it, so we'll save it. What, what you do want to do, leave a little bit of slack in them so that you can adjust the cable, just pull a little bit of the excess cable through. So I think we're all done in here with the ignition changes, so I'm going to just jump in and make sure it starts real quick, then I'll give it some more timing and we'll take it out for a road test. Okay, so here we are, we're going to do another run. Three, uh, two, one. Here we go. So a quick summary of the performance runs we've done. The first one seemed fairly good. We'd lost a bit of time over yesterday, but on the whole it seemed all right. It was fairly similar. We were about 15 and a half seconds on our first run. We ran out again and got like 18 and change, which seemed insane. It didn't feel slower, so I think it's just our telemetry being kind of whacked. Uh, it registered, well, it didn't actually register as you ever hitting 60 on this, despite registering 377 miles an hour. We then did a few more. We got sort of 16 point something. I think we got one in the 14s. So we didn't really, you know, the times haven't really changed much. We certainly haven't gotten much quicker. We probably haven't got much slower, but there's no noticeable change there. Fuel economy seemed fairly similar. So it's, it's kind of weird, actually, given how bad cylinder number one spark plug looks, that it was still running seemingly fine. So overall, not really the result we were hoping for. I was expecting to pick up half a second or a second or something to 60, but no such luck. But at least it hasn't got slower, and at least it didn't blow up from the abuse. So we've got that going for us. Um, there is some good news. We can now go above 5,000 RPM without the ignition cutting out. So obviously there was some problem there that we've now solved. So that's all good. So next up, we're going to move on to some fueling. The carburetors are still a bit wonky, so we're going to sort those out in, in a future episode. And there's also a turbocharger upgrade I'd like to do to this. So I'm hoping to show you guys some of the pre-build work for that before too long.